Um, excuse me, the help? I need my facial cream. I don't need anyone knowing that I'm actually a reptilian humanoid infiltrating the suburbs, spying for the Illuminati, and waiting for the perfect time for us to take over the human world. So get it. Oh, we are filming? Okay. Well, editor, just edit that out. Perfect, thanks. My big, fat, fabulous life showcases a woman named Whitney Waythor, a fat woman who shows how fabulous her life is while being obese. I feel great! So if you are familiar with the series last season, Whitney had a new love <laughs> and a breakup. Do you think that you still might have like romantic feelings for Whitney? But the biggest event that happened was her mother's health. Whitney. Yeah? Okay, you on to the emergency room. My dad calls. He said that my mother had had another stroke. Babs, her mother, had a stroke among so many other things, but she always came back. Unfortunately, for the recent episode and the new season, things took a turn for the worst. Hello and welcome back to the drama where I cover Instagram, TikTok, and of course, reality TV show drama so you do not have to spend hours on your phone or in front of the TV like me. You can go out, live your life, breathe in the fresh air and be a normal human person and contribute to society rather than watching this stuff like I do. But since I am ingesting all of this type of content, melting my brain, could you please hit the subscribe button and get me closer to that 700,000 goal number that I have? Now that would be fabulous. Aren't you guys tired of me asking you? Don't you want me to start asking you for 800,000? <laughs> okay, let's get into the first episode of my big, fat, fabulous life. So you guys, I watched this episode while I was doing cardio and I was ready for some fat and some fat Fabulousness. I was ready for some stupid, you know, lighthearted drama. No, the first episode, or at least the first half of this episode, was very sad. It was my my personal trigger, death. You know, that thing that, you know, is the end. The total end, that's it, you're just dead. First half of the episode, I was just running and crying. So Whitney and her mother, Babs, have an intense bond. It's actually very cute. Love you. You're cute. <laughs> Hi, mommy. How close Whitney is with her parents, her mom and her dad. Well, Babs, unfortunately, had another stroke. And this time, she did not come back very well from that. We got to the hospital and the first thing the doctor said was that she'd had a, a much bigger stroke this time than the other two. And her father had to be the one to make that ultimate decision to either keep her alive and wait or just end her life. It, it became pretty apparent that she was not going to recover. So then it was a decision to stop, you know, <clears throat> her life support. I just hope I did the right thing with I still have second thoughts. You guys, I felt extremely sad. I hate just the topic of death. I know it's something that we can't escape, but I still don't like it. Death is absolutely never easy, at least for me. And I can't imagine having to make that decision. In Whitney's mom's will, she said that if she ever got to this like vegetative state or this state where she just can't really do anything, she would want them to pull the plug, but ultimately it would be her husband's decision. And I would absolutely hate that. Please do not give me anyone. Do not give me the power to give you life or death. Just tell me what you want me to do and I will do it. But that final decision of me being like, okay, yep, yeah, let's kill her. You know, like I personally, if I was just laying there doing absolutely nothing, dude, pull that plug. Like I like to do stuff. I'm a busybody. like let's do things. I'm just laying there. I don't know what you do when you're just laying there. Are you in a, are you dreaming? Can I at least watch TV in my dreams? I don't know, my dreams are crazy. I don't wanna be stuck in that. So I'd probably want someone to pull the plug. But being outside of that, I don't wanna make the decision. Just tell me what you wanna do. Anyway, ultimately he made that decision and it absolutely killed him. If we had seen a flicker of something from her, we wouldn't we wouldn't have done that. So then we move on to the funeral and it was also obviously very sad. The brother gave his speech, the dad gave his speech. I've lost the love of my life. And the days and weeks ahead, are gonna be hard. And Whitney actually held herself together very well during the funeral. I would not have. I was very impressed. I am an ugly crier at funerals. I just can't do it. And she even gave a speech, a very clear, well-spoken speech. If you know me, I am a person who is always in existential crisis. So I have been pondering the death of my parents since I realized that people could die. Something that is very worrying to Whitney though is that when one partner dies and is grieving, the other partner usually goes into depression and loses their just will to live and shortly passes after. I've seen that happen a few times times where someone dies and then their partner's just kind of like 
just doesn't want to live anymore. But Whitney, she is determined to take care of her father and be that support system for him since he lost his one and only. So for the past few months, Papa moved in with Whitney. That he shared with my mom, so we moved him in with me. That may be a temporary arrangement. We're not sure, but I feel like it's something that would help, you know, distract him from his grief. And it's kind of distracting me from my, from my grief. And I think that's very sweet. A lot of parents would absolutely love that, but so many kids are like, uh, no. Stepping away from the topic really quick, because I bring that up by a lot of kids saying, uh, no, you go into the home, mama or papa. Because if you go on TikTok, there's so many millennial children who are doing the whole no contact with their parents. Has anyone else noticed that when an adult child chooses to not have a relationship with a parent, it's always, but she's your mom. It's absolutely everywhere. My friends, patients that I see at work, you know, story after story after story after, you know, my daughter doesn't talk to me, my son doesn't talk to me. Like it was so much easier when the kids were little. I don't get it. Stop telling people who are no contact with their parents that they need to either make things right. I told my mother directly that I would rather be homeless on the street with nothing and have a healthy relationship with her than have her speak to me and treat me the way that she has. And it still didn't click for her. Okay, so 2023 marks 10 years no contact with family. I didn't talk to my father the last 10 years of his life and when he died, I didn't go to his funeral. And some of you might be rolling your eyes, but I am one of those people that go no contact with, their, with my dad for a bit because because he was just such a, he was just a type of person that I didn't want to talk to. And if I looked at it as in, huh, I asked myself if this was not my dad and we didn't have that family bond keeping us together, would I like this person? Would I contact this person? Would I even breathe in the same vicinity of this person? No. And so I said, either change, talk to me this way, or you got to go. And he didn't want to do it for a while and now he is. And as long as he keeps that up, he can stay in my life if it's that important to him to be around his child that he decided to bring into this world. So I just thought I would clear that up to anyone saying, what kid would never take in their parent? Plenty, and for very good reasons. But it's always so sweet when they offer, and it seems like Whitney wanted to do that. Like she really wanted her dad to come in and she doesn't want to lose her dad as well. So she is totally there to be his support system. And how amazing is that? I feel like it's something that would help, you know, distract him from his grief. And it's kind of distracting me from my, from my grief. But the dad is kind of irritated. He likes things, his, you know, you know, older people, they, I mean, even me, I can't put this on just old people. I like things to be my way. <laughs> That's why I like my own space. And Papa Thor is the same way. He likes things his way. He has his own routine. I feel like I've been very, you know, I've, I've been very relaxed. Well, I haven't noticed. And in Whitney's house, there's all these rules and he can't find anything. The other night I was trying to find some paper towels and I had to look through every cabinet. So Papa Thor is not only struggling with the death of his beloved wife, who he's been with for 40 years, but he can't find the paper towels. And now Whitney made him a whole ass binder for this man, this old man. She made him a binder. He doesn't have time for all of that, Winnie. I've made you one with some basic, important stuff. Winnie, he is not going to use that. She just wasted her time, his time. I mean, it looks amazing to me. Someone who loves organized binders, if someone made me this and if they color coded it, oh my God, best friend. Okay, scheduled everything out for me, perfect. Did you put stickers in it? Oh my God, kiss on forehead. You are just a lovely person, but I don't imagine her father following this very cute binder. It's a very strict seven to seven rule. <laughs> Bless you. So the sneezing means he's very irritated. <laughs> At least that's the way that I took it. Every other week is recycling. <laughs> and it seems Whitney's a little irritated as well. Or maybe this is just his way to get out of the whole situation and stop hearing about this damn binder. Painful. What's painful? All your order. So not only is there a binder, but now Whitney decided without even telling him to clean out the house, their house and all of her mom's stuff that she didn't think was very important. So if anything was an heirloom, I saved it. If it was just really interesting, I saved it. If it was sentimental, I saved it. But I'm gonna warn you, it's empty. Which is super sad, but at the same time, it's like, it's kind of nice. Like, okay, let's say Garrett just passed away. Garrett always says he's the one that's gonna die first. And I'm like, what? I'm gonna die first and haunt your ass for the rest of your life. But anyway, he's under the impression that he will die first. And it would be kind of nice to keep his things around just to see. Her closet is empty. All of her drawers are empty. <clears throat> 
One part of me says I, I would like to look into Babs's closet and still see clothes hanging in there. But then at the same time, it's like you kind of have to get over it or at least move on, you know? You can't pretend that they're just going to come back because I think that's kind of damaging. I don't know. I've never lost someone. Well, I've never lost a significant other like that. So I'm not too sure how that would work. So I'm just thinking out of my head here. Planning for the horrid future of death. Anyway, on a positive note, Whitney signed up her and her dad for water aerobics three times a week. That's great for Whitney. She wants to lose weight and it's great for the dad to get out and just move his body. And then I got you a super wicking moisture towel. It's a what? <laughs> super moisture wicking towel so we don't drip. And I have to say, I know this episode isn't about Whitney and her weight loss goals, but she's looking good. Did you notice that? When I, when I started watching this, I was like, she looks like she lost weight and it didn't wasn't really covered in this episode and I had to look it up. Honey, she lost 40 pounds. I think that's so great, but does that mean she lost some of her fabulousness? I'm not sure, but her face looks so different. It looks thinner. I love that for her. Out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. Out, out, in, in. But one moment in the water aerobic class really got me like, side eyeing Miss Whitney Waythor, okay? Her dad was fine. He was swimming. He was dog paddling. He was doing stuff. He was moving. You're punching straight back. He seems happy. And then she decides to pull out this video of his dead wife. I was looking the other night. Listen. <laughs> it's me out for dad. I love reminiscing, but at the same time, why in public when this is still very fresh, when he feels good, he didn't like it. That's enough. Makes me sad. Like, did the producers tell her to do that to give some dramatic effect into this episode? Why do that? Would you like that if, if, okay, let's just say, if you and me, we were in our little one piece bathing suits, we had the, the calf on and goggles and someone died very close to you. And I was like, hey, look, pull out my phone and showed you a video of them and shoved it in your face. Would that bring you pure happiness in public right now in a pool full of other people and their bodies? Makes me happy and then makes me sad. Alrighty, I'm gonna go get changed. Anyway, I just found it odd and I feel like I wouldn't do that to absolutely anyone. So anyway, Whitney doesn't think her father is doing enough. She needs him to step it up, old man. So I think we need to start amping it up a little bit. Water aerobics three or four times a week is enough progress for me. But even though the dad is very frustrated, he's grieving, obviously, he's upset. You know, when people ask you and they do all the time, you know, how are you doing your first responses you know, okay but i'm not okay and whitney's getting on his last nerves he really actually appreciates it and i truly love their father-daughter relationship and i'm slightly jealous for obvious reasons like i would absolutely not let my dad live with me you're going in the home what we aren't that close okay don't shame me for putting up boundaries i don't know where i am on that journey but i'm not okay so whitney goes back to her parents house to move some more things around throw out even more things and her ex-boyfriend lenny soon so john get that couch up to the oh the attic attic yeah who now works for her i have been out of the loop for a while but he works for her now who they went on a trip a few weeks ago when they were not together they were ex-girlfriend and boyfriend and for some reason he made out with like i love her like i'm gonna love her forever <laughs> well i mean they they made out with each other. And yes, this is when it starts to get juicy. This is my type of content, okay? The messy shit. So Lenny's there, Whitney's expressing to him how depressing it is to like just having her dad around, like watching her dad. He doesn't do anything and he used to like just be super active. He used to golf, he used to do karate. He used to always fix things. He was just a do something type of guy all the time. And after Babs died, he's just very like, sitting there. Look at all these things my dad used to do. Like he played football in college. He was a karate champion. He yeah. likes to golf. Pretty much right now, our entire life is water aerobics and him like being super depressed. It's awful. And Lenny, the ex-boyfriend, the one that's not her boyfriend anymore, is uh, consoling her. Come here. Okay. Well, after the cry session and the cuddle session, Whitney brings up that she pretty much owes Lenny a lot of money because she's been very busy. Obviously, her mom passed away. She's been busy with the funeral and, you know, she, uh, she owes him money. He's still been working and she hasn't paid any of her people. Anyway, I owe you a lot of money. I feel awkward. Why do you feel awkward? I just think it's a weird situation for me to be in, like, with my ex being kind of like my boss and because of the fact that we kissed in St. Lucia. Uh, yeah, that is a little awkward, but apparently Whitney is completely 
over him. After Lenny and I kissed in St. Lucia, um, I very quickly came back to my senses. I think once we left the tropical paradise, the vibe just was not there anymore. Doesn't want to be with him, even though she let him wrap those arms around her body and shove his tongue down her throat. Totally done with that. And she tries to make this very awkward situation just into a normal conversation. When's the last time you got laid? Great job, Whitney. That was absolutely perfect. Well, then her ex that she doesn't care about, doesn't want to get back together with, and has no feelings at all for him, and they have a completely professional relationship, says, Yeah, I've been, I've been seeing someone. What? Honey, what? Does she know about the kiss? Or the fact that you're working for your ex-girlfriend? Let me rephrase that. That your ex-girlfriend is your boss? That you console her when her mom has passed away? That you cuddle her? That you touch her a lot? That you just made out with her? Can we go back to that? They were just making out and you've been seeing someone? This is the Jonah Hill situation. How long have you been dating? Like two months. So you've been with me every day for the last two months and you just failed to mention every single day that you've been dating someone for the last two months. Anyway, then Lenny goes on and says, I didn't want to tell you because I thought you would be jealous. I mean, you were making out with her, so like, what the fuck? Like, he was the one that initiated, he's the jerk. It wasn't really a time for me to tell Whitney that I'd been dating someone in my personal life until now. I'm just kind of worried about her being you know, upset with you know, like that idea of another woman in my life. So then they get into this discussion that none of Lenny's girlfriends like, like Whitney, they hate her. Every girl you date, none of them like me. Huh, I wonder why. Is it because you guys have very, very close relationships? Is it because you guys still make out and then call it a professional relationship? Or is it because you ask Lenny to play with your thigh fat? With my fat. Feel that. Wow. Doesn't that feel weird? It's interesting. I feel the other one. It's on both. Because that would definitely make me feel some things. Anyway, the finisher of the whole episode is a new reveal. Do you want to know what it is? Of course you do. You know you're nosy as hell like me. Come on, you wouldn't be here if you wouldn't. She reveals that she has a whole ass half sister. My half sister. You have a sister? This is the juiciest piece of hot goss to ever hit the Thor family. And then they just cut us off, having us sit at the edge of our seat, waiting for the next episode. And I'll make sure to watch it all for you. You guys, thank you so much for watching it here though with me and chatting about this reality television stuff. And if you guys want more, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And in the words of Whitney Waythor and TLC, you guys have a fabulous day. And I will see all of you later. Wake up, honey, I made you breakfast. Fresh coffee and bagels too. A new day is waiting for us. We got lots of fun stuff to do. Let's go to the zoo and feed the monkeys. I can lend them your baseball cap. Let's make the day a very Growing up is just a trap.